Yo, dude, how you doing? Yeah, I'm fine. How are you? Pretty good. Not bad. I just had a nice... I actually feel great because I had a shower and it was like 30 minutes. And uh, for someone like me who has daily like nose problems, <laughs> like with breathing. Yeah, like I can believe, yeah, believe that. It just like opens up your face and you're just like, wow, I can breathe again. Wow, this feels great. Okay. Yeah, I also, I also live in Finland, so especially on cold winters, I I like to stay on super warm, hot shower. Yeah, it feels good. So now if if at parents or so. Yeah, man, it's uh, it actually makes your, the rest of your day like way more comfortable, way easier. Yeah, it it does, it does. But, anyways, uh, how's the star capping going for you, man? Uh, what's the what's the situation right now for you? It's it's go it's going okay. Uh, I'm I'm winning at sometimes yeah. sometimes more than losing but but yeah uh, diamond three uh, the low diamonds okay. and I've been like following your guides for for a long time got some codes from other other guy also but now decided that I'd like to like to send or ask you to have a a lesson or so so now we are here yeah oh yeah uh, I've been like climbing steadily. More or less, steadily. <laughs> and uh, give me a reminder: what uh, race are you playing right now? Yeah, it's Zerk. Zerk. Okay, that's perfect. That's easy. I guess that's the best one I'll coach. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I rem okay. So now you're reminding, you're like making me remember a little bit. I think you were saying something along the lines of like, you were just trying to play, uh, like you can correct me if I'm wrong, but you were playing like styles, like maybe like Ling Bane styles. Like, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And you wanted to see how it went. So we have a lot of options here about what we can do. And what like all of them are good in their own way. But if if you'd like if you if you have like replays prepared, we can check those out and kind of see where your problems seem like they're kind of lying. We can do something more live. Or I can even like give you examples about like what Yeah. You know. I think like I have like few quite short replays because okay. when everything goes like full macro and enemy doesn't do shit. Yeah. And okay, and mostly win because well, I get 200 and attack. And when I scout like some aggression, especially from Terran, it's actually quite hard for me to sometimes okay, even yeah, throw yeah, yeah. because yeah, you know yeah, stuff I, I, like yeah. that. I have like few. Oh no, are those NA replays or what? Yeah, okay, yeah, we, we can go to Europe. Uh, these are NA. Yeah. So if we go to Europe, oh, I'll yeah. have all your European replays. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Good. Good. Then. So yeah, the, the, uh, wait, what? Game client version mismatch was like. Yeah, region. it's not upgraded in the EU. I think you have to change it from the. From the launcher. Uh, la launcher. Okay. Yeah, I had the same problem when I came to NA. Okay, I see. It says update. No, I have to de-upgrade it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's super lame. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, no problem. No it only problem. takes a second, at least. It's not that long. Yeah. Oh yeah, it was fast. I have to de-upgrade it <laughs> to go yeah. back to NA. <laughs> yeah, so, so I guess NA, NA is better. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, yeah. All right, so I am now over here. Uh, I'll just I'll, jo I'll join a channel really fast just to make it super easy. Uh, okay. I, just, I typed it in Discord. I just joined channel Vibu. So, so how did you join a channel? Join. Yeah, so I just slash join Vibu. Vibu. There you go. Yeah. I'll make you leader again. Yeah, great. And then now you should have all your replays. Okay, great. So, uh, I have to first find the right, right one. I think any of these. Uh, no. Okay, now there's. Uh, I think this was actually that one. I'm not hundred sure, but I think if it's quite short, then. It'll be okay. Sure. Well, we'll see. Yeah. Anyways, yeah, six minutes. <laughs> I would <laughs> say... Be. Hey, Vibe, do you uh, ever play the co-op mode? This is like a really... Uh, uh, make me lobby host really quick before we start. Yeah, promote the lobby host. And then yeah. I would say this is a huge, 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 huge thing about Terran, okay? And if you understand yeah. this, it makes everything a thousand times easier. Because every Terran is kind of... I would say their styles are kind of telegraphed and automated. Like, they just 
if I play 100 Terrans, 99 of them are going to do the same thing. And yeah, what this means is, is if you there's there's two way there's two like checkpoints in ZVT for a Zerg player. The first one is getting your economy up to uh, the equal command center fully saturated base count that you've spotted. So a big part of the game is essentially trying to scout how many CCs the Terran has. And you can do this through obviously like sending links at the front door every now and again and an overlord scout in their base. And if you see a third CC, you can guaranteed get your third base saturated. But the second yeah. you see their base count, you stop at that base count. Like in terms of saturation, you can still make an expansion and like take a fourth base, but you just don't saturate it. Because if you just start making army after, uh, you know, like, you, oh, I see three command centers and now I fully saturated three hatcheries and now I'm going to start pumping out army and you focus on like good creep spread, your chances of winning that game are now astronomically high, like super high. So it's because it, it, the way Zergs always die is you play too greedy and you you over drone it a little bit and then you're like, oh, well, now the tank timing is killing me and I'm just going to fucking die or something like that. It uh, it constantly kills you over and over and over and over and over and over. But what? Okay, so you mean, you mean like uh, build or soon to be built uh, CCs? Like, so like you'd if, have to see it already like, started. Yeah, yeah. So existing it doesn't even have to be on spot yeah exactly it would like it could be yeah. like at the front of his natural in this in the depot wall and that's yeah. also fine uh or like in the third or like in his main like next to the main cc and he's gonna lift it off and land it to the third later but it's it's really just <clears throat> it's a thing where if it, if a terran player does a two c because it, it's always the same thing it's like that's why i say like 99 percent of terrans do this it's either a two base pressure or a three base pressure. It's always going to be pressure though. And the reason why is because every Terran unanimously thinks if I don't do anything about creep, I just die. Like, and it's true. It's, it's fucking, it's, it's it is true. And like if they have Terrans that ever even remotely touch your creep and they just allow you to have the entire map, they're fucked. Like it's going to be so hard for them to win the game from there. So they have to do attacks. Yeah. Like it's, yeah. it's, it creep forces Terran to be aggressive. It's like, it's a, it's a non, like the, the only time there's like that 1% Terran, <clears throat> is when you get a player like uh, someone that comes to mind is like never a lot of people know about is like a villo like someone that's like no nah, i'm just gonna play turtle mech i'm just gonna like literally never attack and i'm just gonna sit here and just like make pfs and liberators and ravens and sit there like no one really plays like that though it's really rare uh, but every terran pretty much does aggression it's just how it goes in this matchup because of creep so if you just understand yeah. the the drone yeah. rule you fucking have such a better chance to win uh, and it's it's really about uh, the last thing I'll say, then we'll get into it. Is the two stages of the game are number stage number one is trying to not waste as much larva as possible to get to the point in the game where you're fully saturated on the base count you're looking for, and that sometimes can be difficult if the Terrans get it harassed, and then this uh, with like Hellions or Liberator or whatever. And the second part is once you have fully saturated three bases, literally preparing for a timing and then not taking a bad defense against it. And that comes from a lot, like a lot of that is based on your creep spread, uh, and obviously your macro. Yeah. But if you can get those two things mastered, you're going to crush every turn you play against. Like it's, uh, it's, it's the biggest commonality of all ZBT. Like it's so repetitive in that in that sense. It happens every game. Yeah, I usually, like, if I got something that is not quite normal, I usually find myself wondering that should I spend it on army or workers For sure. yeah, yeah and then i sometimes end end up having oh my god i have like 20 larva and i don't know how to use it because I <laughs> yeah maybe just make something but yeah yeah it's hard it depends on what you scout for sure so we'll talk about your scouting as well um and also if you want this, this might make your life a little easier if you want i am actually if you can look back at discord i'm private streaming my my perspective of the game so if you want to see what oh, yeah, i'm cool. specifically looking at yeah you can like, you can see it through that yeah, I'm watching the stream with a little bit of delay because I, for some reason, have the fancy layout. Yeah. Even though I don't <laughs> yeah. think I should. <laughs> it's all good. Well, now you have no delay with Discord stream. Yeah, great. <clears throat> all right. So, so far, your build's fine. No problems with it yet. Uh, yeah, I'm going for the goulash yeah. with the overload speed you had in, in one of your videos. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, everything's looking good. Your scout is fine as well. I like the direction it's going. Uh, we'll keep going here. Your 
Drone stacking. I mean, I like you know, I like to talk about this with everybody. You're actually perfectly saturated on all your patches, which is great. Okay, now. Yeah, I usually. Okay, well, go ahead. I have sorry. Been practicing to do it kind of as fast as possible. No, it's good. Yeah, it's it's super good because this is something you need to never stop doing. Uh, you need to definitely always make sure that you're managing that as well as you can because it just literally hurts you every every second that goes by. You're missing out on resources when you don't do it properly. So it never goes away and it only becomes more demanding because these like the checkpoint that I just told you about where it's like, you need to get to the, the ideal saturation and not lose larva. And then you need to also make defense based on how many CCs you see with how many drones you've made from that, that kind of shit. will that we'll keep going deeper into throughout this. That matters more because you can hit those checkpoints faster if you properly saturate your base. So yeah. it like, it actually speeds you up. Um, but now if I were to ask you, like so this this is the kind of shit we need to really talk about a lot here, I think. Because this is gonna give you a game plan. What do you feel like is happening right now? If see just if you if, like what do you think possibilities are in this game right now after seeing what you're seeing right now? Well I was expect expecting aggression, mm -hmm. but I saw the reactor first, so I didn't make the first links to uh say hi to the Reaper. Okay, that's perfect. I, I love it. That's all I got from this. Okay. I saw that there's no no CC yet. Yeah, I mean that's great. That's that's uh, so far. That's fine. That's totally fine. Read uh, the fact that you said that there's there can't be a Reaper is amazing because there can't be. This is way too fucking fast of a reactor. Uh, so I love that. And it like the fact that he made it like so. If you know build times, um, of like what things take to make, a Reaper should be spawning out of your. Uh, a Reaper should be spawning out of your Viper. your base, or out of his sorry, out of his base by just about two minutes. That's just like the normal time a Reaper would usually come out, and a Reaper and a Reactor have very similar build times. It's a Reactor is only four seconds longer than a Reaper, so when you see this Reactor, you can already kind of tell. Well, that basically replaces what the Reaper was, and that it, you know that means that now this guy is going to have the potential to make either two Reapers at once if he really wanted to, or he can go Marines really fast if he wants to. Uh, the only thing I would tell you that, that would make this absolutely perfect, everything you said was correct, by the way, but the only thing I would tell you to do to make this like even a little bit better would be if you would know how long it takes for that reactor to build and you know how long it takes a marine to build, you have about 36 seconds from right now until a marine would pop out because the reactor's halfway done and it's a 36 second build time structure. So you still have a good amount of time there. And then a marine is 18 seconds on top of that. So you have like roughly like 35, 36 seconds, somewhere around there. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it's still a lot of time to where you could take your overlord and just move it down to like maybe like right there just to see what's in this area right here. Is he making a really fast uh, like command center on like the high ground? Is he because he's afraid of like a 12 pool? Is he going to go for a factory behind this super fast, but probably can't afford it? The only way you could literally afford that is if he like double gassed really early. Which, if you did see a factory, that would be a huge sign as to what his build's going to be. It's, like, super aggressive with, like, an all-in tech path. But if you just move down, there's no threat of the overlord dying. And it just gives you more of an understanding of what's going on. And if you saw nothing here, then it would be like, okay, well, there is still a potential of a command center follow-up or maybe a second Rax follow-up. It's Then it's kind of in the air. As long as you get zergling speed, you're fine either way. And then you can make drones and lings accordingly. Yeah, yeah, make makes sense. Oh, I, okay, you went back. I love that. That's super good. And now you see, okay, so right here, this is huge. This t kind of tells you that this guy is, he's not like massively heavy on the gas because he's making the factory as the reactor is like done. But like, it's not like he's making it super early. But uh, this does tell you it's at least invested. He is invested. This is not like, oh, well, he's got a normal macro build going on here. Automatically, the, the way I think you should look at StarCraft 2, especially in ZBT, is look at it in terms of economic development and go, okay, well, this Terran is now behind where he should be. So that means that now I need to throttle back a little bit myself, not like as much as he has, but it means that like, let's just say if you could go at a, like 100 out of 100, and that's like your efficient, most efficient droning that you could do. Once you see this, Maybe drop that back down to like an 85 or like a 90 out of 100. Because this guy could have been 100 out of 100 himself, but he dropped his build down to like maybe like a 65 to a 70 out of 100. So you can still be like, and what, what I mean is like his SCV development. Like it's just not going to be nearly as good as it was before. 
So you like you don't have to be as all in as he looks like he's going to be in a sense, but definitely play a little safer. Definitely play a little safer. So the fact that you ran aggression earlier probably means you're going to do that, which is really good. Um, but yeah, that's just, like this is definitely not economical at all. It's not really. I love that you scouted okay. it too. Yeah, your scout was great, and then you also saw the command center. Uh, I, I have to admit that I didn't like re register it when I watched the replay after the game. I usually make I have a, an Excel sheet that I sometimes not all after all the game, especially if I'm like mega tilted or so. Mm -hmm. An Excel sheet that I write what I scouted, and I didn't write that I saw the CC. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it was like <laughs> my second time I watched the replays. That when I register, I, I on minimap I would sh see it, but yeah, yeah. It was so fast, you know. Well, okay, make and I was already doing things. Make a habit of this then. Uh, make a habit of every time you scout someone's base, take a quick glance at the minimap, and the, like, like literally just so like when you're done, when you're like, okay, Everlord, go back up here, look at the minimap really fast, and like come here with your camera, like on the screen, like right here in your base or something, and your eyeballs literally look at the minimap in like bottom left, okay. like just just take a glance, because you can tell automatically that that's a command center. Because of the fact of the yeah. box being super big, like that's just bigger than a racks and it's bigger than a factory. That is a command center sized box, and hatcheries and nexus are the same size. So that's a huge de that, that that you know that's where we can tell guaranteed. This guy is not owning you anymore. He's just going for aggressiveness early that you need to play safe against, and then he's going to have a macro follow up. So if you make a little bit of extra defense and you defend, you're going to be super far ahead. But if you take damage, it's going to stabilize the game, or he might be ahead if he take if he kills a lot. Yeah, yeah, that's that, that yeah makes sense. So yeah, the, the, I would say what. Let me say let's say this as well. What do you feel? Like okay, um, or no, 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 not gonna say it like that. There's a lot of possibilities here. Uh, I, I'll just tell you what I would think would be a good defense for what you have. So, the one of the best things you can do against someone who plays like this is emphasize queens more. Just if you're if you're already a queen heavy player, that's good. Um, it makes playing ZVT a lot easier because it gives you better creep spread and it gives you better defense. But I would say seeing something like this, all you really need to do to punish this is just start making more queens faster. And you have multiple options in the form of you could go for a Roach Warren or you could go for a Bane Nest. But I would definitely tell you to prioritize one of those two structures before you take a layer now. So that's where I would say the safer... So like a non-safe, a greedy version, okay? A greedy version of, Z, of Zerg against Terran would be... Alright, I'm going to get Zergling speed. I'm going to be really greedy on my drones. And then as soon as I can take a layer, I'll just take a layer. And then I'll take my tech after I take my layer to get like Bane okay. speed or something like that. That's greedy. Safe is taking your tech before you take a layer. Because if this guy decided he wanted to do a hillbat timing really fast, he'd let's say he makes like four marines and then swaps to a, a reactor factory, and then he makes an armory right away, and he comes to your base with hillbats and marines, and you're like, oh fuck, I only have zerglings, I'm gonna die, well, I'm gonna take a lot of damage right now. This is not good. Uh, that's the kind of shit that'll punish you. So, but if you just make a faster roachborn or a faster bane nest because he's playing more aggressive, so you delay layer, you'll be just fine. It'll be so easy. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that actually makes quite sense because I, like, 100% of the time I go lair, and when I had to cast for it, I build painting nest. If I don't scout, like, really VCs, then I've been actually going growth for a but yeah. then it's a bit harder against Hellbats. No, for sure, yeah. So, yeah, so, like, one of the things I was actually planning to ask that do you recommend roaches or painlings against? Some DC Hellbat push. I definitely recommend roaches. Got... Roaches okay. against Hellbats. I like that a lot more because you can kite. Uh, you can actually like run faster than Hellbat on creep, and you're ranged. You have super, you have more range than they do, even though they have like they're not fully melee. Uh, the Hellbat that is. So, you, but you can like attack it back up, attack it back up, and you can actually whittle down Hellbats super effectively. Like six roaches yeah. can kill six Hellbats pretty fucking easily if you just micro just a tad for like five seconds. Okay, okay. I've been struggling that, uh, especially in like some multitask situations when I have a PC hitting my main and on my third I have. So that's so many helpers. Do you have do you have spores? Do you have spores when PCs show up? Uh, an ideal situation. 
So you could always have spores up no matter what if you scout properly. Yeah. And we'll, t- we'll talk about how your scout, because like, we're about to come to another point when you need to scout again. Your first scout yeah. was, was amazing. I loved it. You scouted the natural, you scouted the command center, and you obviously didn't see it, but yeah. You scout, but you did scout everything. That was fucking great. It was yeah. perfect scout. And then this scout needs to go into his base, like deeper down the bottom. I would say this scout, sh- like, so you should do two things at once right now because you can't actually see if he's taken it yet already. But you know when he took it, so you know that he has it. You just don't know if he's already, like, planted here. And if you wanted to, it's something you could punish. Like, let's say, if he wasn't defending it properly, your links could go in and pop a mule off and then, like, leave or something like that. Because he has no wall here. So, but you don't have to do that. So I'm not saying that's mandatory. But it'd be just ni- it would be nice to just see the confirmation of the base because it gives you a timer uh, on the base itself. And then be like, okay, yep, no, he's planted here. So now the... There, okay, let me let me say it like this because this is another tangent that I want to explain so to not, make, to not make it confusing. If you see someone plant a base at their at their location that it is now it at, basically what you can do is make a mental note of that about an eight minute timer, and that eight minute timer represents when their patches are going to start depleting, and then what this does for you is it gives you a lot of information in the mid game to late game to understand how to attack more intelligently, to go okay. If this guy took his base exactly at four minutes, that means right about 12 minutes, this base is going to start looking really sad, and it's going to start losing its like some of its lower tier patches. And if I can prevent him from expanding further away, all these SCVs that become like kind of like shit jobs, like they're like, well, we're oversaturated now. And if he can't transfer anywhere else because you keep denying future bases, and that becomes your strategy to no longer attack his inner base, but you attack his outer base every time, he starves out, and it becomes really hard for him to stabilize in the game ever again. Essentially, it's just it's it's a nice little tactic you can um, uh, employ in your gameplay, uh, and it it just gives you an understanding of how long the Terran has gas. Essentially, like the, how long can they keep making units for? Okay, so now he's moving out. Queens would destroy this, but definitely scout right now. This would be a huge opportunity scout because he's. He's currently out of his base, right? And your lings, uh, I'm not going to lie, they shouldn't be here. As soon as you saw him leaving his base, you should have just went back and let your queens kind of handle this. Um, but oh, right now, especially since he just left, perfect time to go. Just peek and make sure he has it there, and he doesn't. That's a huge sign. Like The fact that he still doesn't have it would, ma- would tell me, just keep fucking making queens. Because even though this guy made a command center, I feel like, look what he's doing. This is, okay, so this is a huge, 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 huge sign. If he still has not taken his base, there is a higher chance now that he's cutting SCVs. Like, he's it's, yes, he's taking an expansion, but he's not prioritizing the expansion as much as he probably would want to be. Because he's so far behind on economy, it only further tells you that this guy needs to do damage to your economy to get himself back in the game. Because he's so super far behind otherwise. Uh, so that yeah. that'd be a nice little... It, it just re-incentivizes that he's going to attack you more. And then if you had this overlord get into his base right now too, you can see what his follow-up is going to be. And you can already tell right now his follow-up is not going to be Battlecruiser. It's not going to be uh, Mech. It's going to be a bio follow-up because the tech lab is currently throwing some upgrades out there. The only the, There's only one time when a tech lab on a Rax could ever turn into Mech. And it's just like this. And it would be if he was making Marauders, not Marines. Because he, if you go for a Concussive Shell Marauder plus Hellbat... And then want to turn that into mech later. That is actually something that happens a lot. Like it's a hellbat timing that's like super fucking uh, like a power push. But if it's marines, and it's also a tech lab upgrade, it's not. He's not getting concussive shells right now, right? Like no point. So it's going to be stim pack, and it's going to be for a bio follow up. So this would tell you everything right now. This would tell you more aggressive, and bio follow up. And you also don't see a third CC yet. So, I mean, it's still early. Uh, and he's also kind of broke, so he can't really afford it anyways. But as you travel through his base, if his brains are all gone and you get more time in his base, you might see another tech structure get thrown down or a third CC get thrown down in the next, like, 45 seconds. Yeah, I always got around four minutes so after my OV speed is done, so it should be, like, oh, it's good. minute. Super good. Yeah. I'm glad you're scouting. Your scouting is really good. Yeah. Well, I have the overload speed, so if I don't scout this... Kind of redundant. Yeah. Okay, so the, the only thing I don't like about what you're not doing... or like, So I love your scouting. I love the fact that you're giving yourself the information that you need. Keep doing that. That's the best part of your gameplay I've seen so far. The thing I don't like about your gameplay, though, as much as what I think you should be doing, 
is you're not making enough queens fast enough, and you have a ton of money as a result of this. And uh, if you make it, because everything you've scouted so far has told you aggressive, aggressive, aggressive. And it keeps getting reconfirmed. And when you see aggressive, you still need to, no matter what, make queens whenever you can. But I think queens need to be the secondary to a larva priority of droning and shit like that. But that's if you're playing, if you're able to play standard and you're making like the, the economic development as fast as you can. But just like we kind of talked about earlier, when you spot something that looks like the Terran is no longer being as economically, in, you know, applied as he could be. And now you're going to be like, okay, well now let's play a little safer. One way you could play safer that, that we talked about was like obviously the Bane or Roach Warren before layer. Another way you can do it is prioritize queen pumping and then drone behind that. So you always okay. prioritize queens being made as a priority first. Because it's not as economical, but it's a lot fucking safer. And you're still being more economical than this. But you're defending your economy now way better. Yeah, yeah, that is a valid point. Yeah. So if you had, because right now you should have like four queens in the front and like three queens injecting already. So you're down, I would say you're literally missing like two queens as opposed to what you should have. Or what, what you do have, sorry. Yeah, I don't know what I'm I'm focusing because I usually like the, the minute the uh, queens pops, like, yeah, now I added them in my control group. Mm -hmm. And I should produce new ones. I'm to auction. Yeah, I'm, Sorry, I was gonna say I'm actually totally okay too with uh, your droning. I the droning is great. There's two things though that you need to do here. Uh, like one is what we just we just met the queens. Uh, queens are huge. Another thing you need to do though is uh, the fact that you have overlord speed makes things really 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 easy to make this work properly. But like, if you think about it, what is the Terran's goal right now? The Terran's goal is to kill your drones, right? He wants to kill your drones because that's what his whole build has been telling you so far. Because his build is literally not very economical, but it's very aggressive. And if he gets his damage done, his build somehow pulls ahead of yours, and then it makes sense. But if you defend it, his build sucks. So if you did if you did something, one thing in your build would be to grab an overlord, put it like right here. Grab an overlord, put it like right there. Grab an overlord, put it like right there. Because that way, no matter where he goes... Your queens are always in position to defend before he gets there because you'll see him crossing a further out overlord and you just have your queens like right here and you go hey queens he's going bottom right okay go from here to there okay he left go back to here hey queens he's going in the middle now go from here to here okay he left he's going back now go back to here okay he's going to the north side go from here to here you don't have to move anywhere really you're just right there the whole time and you can always zone out where he goes because he's having to take all these massive laps around everywhere and his brains can't kill your overlord either if it has speed. Like, he'll never kill it. You just fly oh, away. True. So, you, you can... It would allow you to be this greedy because the thing I'm afraid of for you right now is if your queens are all right here and then he just hits you right here with Hellions and he wipes out with 10 drones and you're like, ah, oh, fuck. Well, wasted larva, right? And that's what you don't want to happen because you want to hit that checkpoint as fast as you can. So he's pushing the front again, which is fine. This is again where if more you have more queens, it would help a lot. And I would say, uh, just general numbers, if you're playing a macro oriented Terran, you probably want to go to about like eight, nine queens. That's a normal game, okay? Like probably anywhere between eight or nine. So you can have like three, or go ahead, sorry. Uh, you mean like overall? Or yeah, like, overall, uh, overall. Yeah. Like three, in I three I'm injecting. Usually, uh, I'm like my my standard is at seven. That's okay. That's that's that that's actually fine against a standard player. That's fine. Four queens creeping and three queens injecting. That's that's actually fine yeah. against a standard yeah, I transfer player. Transfer for my for the macro hatches and so on. Sure, that's good. I would say the more aggressive they are, though, increase that number. And this okay. is this is more aggressive. So go. I would say this game you want to go probably like ten. Like, okay. you, you, you don't kind of, like, go crazy be, like, 20 queens or something like that. Just literally make another round of queens out of your hatcheries. Or two more rounds. Like, we're, we're, so when I say that, I'm not talking about your main hatch. Because it's going to be doing a layer. I'm talking about just your natural yeah. and just your third. So we're talking about sets of two. So make another round or two more rounds of queens to, based on how aggressive your opponent is. So I would say this. The first thing you scouted, that should tell you that when you saw the factory and the reactor really fast... Okay, let's make another round of queens. This guy is really gas-heavy, 
because you went factory before CC, and the CC doesn't exist. And then the second time you scouted at four minutes and you saw, he still doesn't have his natural. Add a second round of queens to that. You just spotted two different levels of aggression from this Terran. The first one was an investment to gas. The second one was an investment to army, not SCVs. Because he, he would have taken that faster if he was making SCVs constantly. Otherwise, he would have had like 25 on the mineral line. But he had 17 because he just stopped making SCVs. And it makes sense because he didn't take the natural. Like, so he's just aggressive as fuck. So more queens would make this just not do anything. And the perfect way to defend this, I would say, would be... You're really afraid right now, right? So this this is why more yeah. queens would help here. You're really afraid because if you go up here to, like, the north side of Liberator... Suddenly, Hellions can run on your base, and you take a down of damage. And you're like, oh, god, all my drones are dead. Uh, and if you try to fight the Liberator from either the south or the right, right in the front of it, you walk into the Liberator field here that he set up. Because you physically can't shoot the Liberator from the left or the top side, or like the, like the upper left or the full left side, without walking into the field. And you do not want to walk into this field, because there's just so much extra damage that you don't need to eat. Uh, which it's going gonna, it's gonna to fuck your queens up. And it actually might make the Hellion Marine kill your queens. So... The perfect way to defend this would be if you had more queens and you had, let's say, four queens here and those lings that you just kind of let, let die. Let's say those lings were sitting right here in case he tries to run past your queens. But like four queens sit here and then four queens. Let's say you have eight queens here or like seven queens here. Or so you have like three or four queens here. You have three or four queens here. And these queens on the top side just smack the liberator. And then you can transfuse them. And then the Liberator won't live very long. It doesn't actually... Like, it's, it's going to be taking 27 damage a shot. So it's going to go down pretty fucking fast from three queens. Because uh, it does 9, 18, 27. Uh, for, you know, 9 times yeah. 3. Um, so yeah, it would die super fast. And once the Liberator is dead, you can then once again have all your queens just A move forward and push them away. And then have your Overlords spotting to where he goes again, just like you were before. Fully saturate your bases. And then you'll be on that three base gearing setup where you're like, cool, I just defended his attack. And now I can gear up on three bases really hard and go into something I want to go into, unit-wise. And really just establish control on the map. Because, yeah, right now, this is now super scary for you because if you wanted to, he could literally run into your base. And yeah. th this is potentially game-losing situation here for you. And you're just running through the lib here with all your queens. Yeah, this is the, this is now completely... It's off the rails. Things are falling apart. And yeah. this is the moment in the game where his build has now paid for itself. Because it's not even done yet. We're only going to watch you take more damage from, from here going forward. And your queens are all dead. Except for the one here. Like, you just lost pretty much all your queens. You have no queen here. You have a queen in your main still. And you have this queen at your natural. But you have no queens being made either. So you're going to be super behind on queens. Your injects are now going to go... They're going to plummet off of a cliff. And all these Hellions have the means to kill a super saturated mineral line because he transferred out here with all of them. So now this is super susceptible. And right now you have... I guarantee you have a massive drone lead still over him. But it's about to equalize, I bet. Or maybe even you drop a little bit lower than he is. If all the drones die, unfortunately. So this is the... I, I would say most ZVTs... This is the point where if this happened like this, most Zergs would be like, I already lost the game. So this is like, it's, it's just, this is what you want to prevent from happening. You know, like if you know yeah. he's going to be aggressive, do not let it get to this point. And the way you do that is play a little safer. Like we talked about earlier. If you make more Queens, you can make a Bane Nest before you go layer or something or a Roach Warren, whatever you feel comfortable with. And I, I see you did too. You're definitely getting flustered. It's, it's okay. Uh, but yeah, if you have those means, super easy. And then, let's go back really quick, because I want to tell you something really fast. This is really, 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 really relevant to talk about. It's your four-minute scout. It's going to it's gonna give you an idea as to what you need to make in addition to the queens. So, there are three things you could make in addition to queens. There is static D. There is tech. And then there is literally just more queens on top of queens. So... 
you don't, and you're already going to have lings every single game regardless. This is super standard. So your lings are going to exist no matter what. Like the 12 lings you make or whatever, that's just normal because it really helps deal with the Terran players who are like, I'm going to make four Hellions and just go, and I'm going to YOLO into your mineral line and see what happens. If you have like 12 lings, you shut that down and then you don't lose all your drones. Uh, so those, that's super standard. But once you saw this, okay, right now, this is huge information. And the, the information that you're seeing right now is number one, You've reconfirmed, again, this guy is broke because he still hasn't even taken his natural yet because the command center is still there. So that's a huge sign that tells you this guy can't afford what a normal Terran can afford at this point. He's literally going to have uh, less of a follow-up because he has less money coming into his base right now. That's just how it goes. He, ha he might have, a, you know, this timing initially is going to be strong, but the follow-up is going to be weaker than normal. So that's that's fine. Uh, they, you know, that's that's a that's a good thing for you as long as you don't die right now. The second yeah, thing so is, he's or, not like fully, but at least somehow all inning. Yeah, like he's just doing a really aggressive timing, and if it fails, he's like super far behind. Yeah. So this part now, this starport is huge. The fact that it exists is the first part. That's huge. So now you know he has a starport. So now you know there's a possibility of, of a hybrid timing that can involve medevac drop. So you gotta, pro I would say you definitely want to get an overlord down here. Because if he decided to have a medevac boost like right here, and he just boosted through and dropped Hellions right here, and suddenly he's in your main base and your queens are nowhere near to be found, you could lose a lot of drones. So definitely get an Overlord down here. So you'd want an Overlord as a priority. You'd want to have Overlord 1, Overlord 2. That was great. Perfect. Overlord 3, 4, 5 up here. That would be perfect. Overlord 6 would be down here. Okay? Like, you'd want to put... Okay. You're like the very next overlord you do, you'd want to have it for like drop uh, defense and shit like that. Just in case he does something like that. But as soon as you see a liberator, then obviously you know what it is. The next thing is, so that, that's again, we see he has a starport, so that's a possibility. Uh, and it's a bigger possibility too because we see he has no add on. If there was, if the tech lab was on the starport instead, then it would change things. And the way it would change things would be. A Terran player who has a tech lab and a starport obviously can make Banshees faster than they can make uh, Battlecruisers. They can also make a Raven faster than they can make Battlecruisers. But this is something important to know again. If a Terran player wants to make Banshee or Raven, they can definitely make that a lot faster out of the tech lab. And it's you can also tell Banshee's going to be a little more intimidating if it has like a upgraded tech lab because it might get Cloak. And that would, tell, that would make me tell you... If that was the case here, and he was like starting an upgrade on the tech lab on the starport, and like he swapped the racks over to the starport, and now there's a green glowing tech lab on the starport, and it's building a unit, I would say you have about like 50 to 60 seconds to then get ready to make a spore crawler. And these are the things you need to remember. These are the things you need to memorize because this starport hasn't been a lie or hasn't been active for that long because it's going to be a little bit faster than normal because this guy prioritized gas but even so this starport cannot physically cannot have existed for more than a minute right now or even more than like 45 seconds like it's it's pretty fresh because we're only four minutes of the game and he already has a starport it's there's no way it can exist for like three minutes already because you can't make a starport unless you make your first depot so knowing that this starport has barely existed so far is a big deal now, there's two things you need to really understand. the Because queens can deal with everything else. The first thing that queens can't deal with unless they have help is a cloaked banshee. And the second thing uh, queens can't deal with by themselves without help, realistically, is battlecruisers. Because it's going to become a real big pain in the ass if you just have queens versus VCs. You still can deal with it, but it's, it's literally annoying. So if you understand what the two timers of those units are, a cloaked banshee and a battlecruiser... It's a 79 second upgrade. So we don't have it on the starport, unfortunately, but I'll just, I, I'll tell you. It's a 79 second upgrade on Cloak. So all you gotta do is have a Spore Crawler per meter line if a Cloak Banshee is being made before 79 seconds is up. That's where I got the whole 50 to 60 seconds because the Spore Crawler itself is 21 seconds. So if you waited, let's say 20 seconds, or sorry, 50 seconds to make a Spore, and you were like, okay, I'll make a Spore at 50. And then you add 21 to that, it's still 71 under 79. And you're, if you're scouting at four minutes, this is really early on the starport. So it would basically, you'd have a, a spore in time to deal with a Banshee that has Cloak because you were not even including the travel time 
of the Banshee as well, and having it make, making sure that the second cloak's done, it's like flying in your base, research complete, and it's like cloaking right away, right? Not everyone plays that efficient either. But I hope that makes, like, we're just yeah, trying to maximize kind of time. <laughs> or go ahead, sorry. Yeah, that's pretty pretty sick, sick to see in pro games when at the same time the Banshee activates the cloak, you have the spore coming. No, exactly, right? It's because people understand timers. Yeah. Like, exactly what I'm telling you right now. There is, there because it, you, it doesn't ever change. The cloak research upgrade is exactly the same all the time. So if you see, he's got it like a, like in this position. If he actually was getting cloak, you could make spores on the clock here by like four, I would say 450, 445 would be like normal in a normal game where he's going, going for like command center after barracks and then getting a factory, normal builds. But because this guy is a little bit faster, I would say this game, you want to maybe speed it up just a little bit and you'd probably want to start making spores if there was cloak being researched here by like 430. Because it would, like, we're talking about a little bit of a faster tech path. Like he made the factory like 20 seconds faster than normal, and then he also might make the starport 20 seconds faster than normal and go for like super fast cloak if that's what his plan was. So again, that's where like the you play a little safer, you play a little bit more, a little bit less efficient with your economy. Like you make you cut drones for a second to make spores at that timer because it makes sense because he went for a faster economy or he, he went for a slower economy himself to get faster tech as well. So that's what, how that would make sense. I hope that I hope that overall that makes sense though. And again, we're getting yeah, yeah, it really does. Yeah, we're getting it from timers. The second timer that's irrelevant is a fusion core, is a forty three second structure. Uh, or sorry, it's forty six. I was like, is that am I right on that? I gotta check. It's forty six seconds, so it's a long one. And then a battle cruiser is sixty four. That's guaranteed. That's one hundred percent guaranteed. A battle cruiser is sixty four. So forty six and sixty four is one hundred and ten seconds. That's so that's almost two minutes. So a battle cruiser, uh, if it was a normal build, it wouldn't even come out in, into your base if you like teleported the second it spawned until probably like 550. So you could make spores at like 530 if he was going VCs. And you would know that because he has a tech lab, no research being done on it, and your overlord speed would see a fusion core somewhere. And you'd be like, all right, cool. Like another sign of a BC2 is you can't even start making a BC until like upper four minute, like 450, 445, 455, depending on when he builds it. Because you can't you can't start a BC until their fusion core is done. So if you saw a starport with a tech lab that was doing nothing, and you're like, okay, why are you not getting an upgrade? And why are you not building a unit? Probably because even because like, let's say he's got a fusion core way the fuck up here, and he's proxying it. It would make sense still because he's not making any, why did you prioritize the starport and you're not making a unit? Oh, probably because you're waiting for the fusion core to finish, that you're hiding from me. And then you could just assume, okay, cool, I'll just make spores at like 5.30. But again, in this particular game, just like we said before for, for the Banshee thingy, if this guy did not prioritize Barracks Command Center as his build, and instead he went Barracks Factory and then Command Center, his tech path is faster, so you need to speed up your timers too. So instead of taking spores at like 5.30, maybe take him at like 5.10. And this, this is the only two differences. Because like, there's, there's only two ways Sarah can do this. They can either rush it, or they can get it in a standard way. Like, it really depends on how much they want to prioritize economy. So, and it, it's just... And then once you have the, the open... You don't, you don't got to memorize everything all game, okay? That's, it's not like you have to be like... I have to calculate how many barracks making how many units and how many seconds. And I got to know all these things. That doesn't matter. It's just the opener because once your drone count is done, all numbers don't matter anymore, and you just go into full army phase all game. And you, because the game comes becomes something else, which is just strategically attacking somebody. Like, do I want to go left? Do I want to go right? Do I want to drop him? Whatever. Uh, like, you just think about how you want to attack somebody. But in the opener, when you're scouting, it's really all it, timers matter a lot there because you're trying to gauge how greedy you can be as a Zerg player. Like, how many drones am I allowed to make right now before I just die? And should I prioritize something else a little bit, or am I going to be okay here? So, knowing these numbers for the opener is huge. Because it'll give you... If, if you have the perfect defense when he shows up, it'll feel so easy. Like, I would say the game gets easier the more knowledge you have. Because if you give yourself proper defense, defenses are easier. But if you give yourself improper defense, defenses are harder and the game feels difficult. So it's really all about really understanding where your limitations are and uh, knowing like the proper responses, I would, I guess. And against BC and Banshee, again, the same thing would be just make a spore calling the mirror line. 
just one spore in the bitter line, call it a day. Easy peasy. And it'll help so much at dealing with the, e either one of those things. And then you can make an overseer yeah. with the queens walking around your creep and spread creep with the overseer. If it's a banshee. But anyways, we'll go forward again. And uh, this is, yeah. So the game is about to end, right? Yeah. And right. I we can see why too. It's because you didn't have enough queens and they walked into the lib field, which did, this liberator did like three times the damage of the Hellion Marine. It did so much damage to your queens. It fully killed one, and it beat the shit out of another one. Whereas the Marine and Hillian did like that to the other queens. Like, they barely yeah. didn't do much. Yeah, if I, if I remo rem remember correctly, uh, I forgot to whole position them before I went for my microcycle. Micro yeah, no, so he, drag he so drug yeah. you into the circle. Yeah. That yeah, sucks, for sure. Uh, but if, if, if even if that happened to you, think about it like this, too. Even if you got drugged into the circle and you were like, oh, shit, whoops, uh... I was mackering and I forgot to hold position. If you had eight queens there instead of like four, you would have crushed that liberator and it would actually be dead right now. And you would just then push them back anyways. And you still might lose like two queens if you're not micring it and you're not transfusing, but you'd still win the fight overall. And then this would not be a threat anymore to what it's now going to become even further. Because that ar yeah. that army could not have beaten queens. Like if you had eight, like again like eight of them, and that's why. You just gotta understand. Oh, I need to play a little safer, so I need to make more queens, right? Yep, and I got the queen. Yeah, then now for sure, like you're you're definitely having a problem here because now he's got, he still has pretty much his whole army here aside from the marines, and yeah, there's all no your queens are them. dead. Yeah, all you like you have zero queens or you have one in your main, and that you have no other queens being started, so one queen can't beat that. You, ten queens can, but one queen cannot. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, you just it was like you didn't respect the situation. Because look, look at this natural. You didn't respect yeah. it enough as to what he's capable of. If you defended that, and you have three bases saturated versus a guy on one fucking base, this guy has not made an SCV in the last three minutes of this game. Which is why that second over. That's why I said that four minutes. You really wanted to check this, and make sure he if he's planted or not, because it gives you uh, signs of what a player is going for. And a player who's not gonna who's, who still expands, but he's like, you know what? Whatever. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna move the command center because my priority is not expansions. My pr like even though he has it, obviously it's fine. But he's he's not making SCVs for it. Like he's literally just gonna fucking make units full on, and he's probably using this for like the follow up after he fully commits to his attack. So, and that's kind of what it is, right? If his attack would have failed, or if it succeeded like it did, he then plants it after. So this is this expansion is going down four minutes after your natural. It's fucking crazy. Uh, but anyways, do you have any questions about this game so far? About what we talked about? No, I think it's you. You have answered everything I've been wondering. And uh, yeah, uh, I, I actually, no, no, I do. Like when I scout at four minutes, uh -huh. sometimes when I see like one of each buildings one one one, mm -hmm. and uh, are they supposed to have like something else also? No. Like some if I have C uh, third CC. So keep this in mind, okay? One 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 is many 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 possibilities. There's so many things that a Terran could do off of one one one, and depending on what they choose to go for, could be less or more expensive. So an example of something that's super expensive would be like Liberator plus. Hellion plus Marauder. That's one of the most expensive options you can go for out of all three buildings. Then that would be like a Hellbat timing with Marauder concussive support with uh, Liberator support as well. That's super aggressive. That's even more aggressive than what he did here to you just now. It's like it's like one tier above what he just did to you. And then another uh, relatively expensive option would be don't even use the racks. Go for Battlecruiser Hellion. That's still also pretty expensive. So if you if they did something like that, the third command center is going to probably be very delayed. It's not going to be super. It's not okay. going to be the, the fastest priority ever. But now a cheaper, way more, uh, um, like faster third command center kind of kind of a one 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 build would be maybe something like uh, he's got a barracks that's not making any units yet. It just was an add on. Like he made a marine and a reaper right off the bat, and then he made a reactor, and then he stopped using the barracks altogether. So then the Rax is just sitting there. And then he's only making Hellions, and he made one Viking. And his Viking's okay, going to yeah, go so kill the Lords. Yeah, so one one is just more like a guideline that what kind of uh, 
cap capabilities he has to yeah. he have on producing stuff. So yep. it doesn't say that okay he is spending this much money. It's just how much he can. Yeah, like, and that, or, that's so. why the four minute scout is so important because uh, you have like at four minutes usually the Terran's gonna have he's not gonna have his follow up always decided at four minutes, but he will have his aggressive harassment decided at four minutes. So you're gonna know. Is this Banshee based? Is this Liberator based? Is this Medivac based? Is it Widowmind based? Is it Hellion based? Is it uh, Bio based at all? Like, what kind of a uh, one on one are you going to throw at me? And the beautiful thing about Zerg is that a lot of Terrans get really mad at Zerg for Queens can deal with every form of one one one. The only thing you got to understand is if it's Battlecruiser based or Banshee based with Cloak, you have to have Spore support. But queens can literally deal with every single form of one one one, and then the last one would be, if it's a super aggressive hellbat based one one one, you probably want to go for your bane nest or your roach warren. Either one can work. I would prefer roaches myself personally, uh, but they're both viable. You'd want to do one of those before you take a layer, because that's super expensive, which means it's super aggressive. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That clarifies it quite well uh, and then if you get out of that again that that's the phase one of the game getting your economy up and then making sure that it's not dead by the time you want to switch into actually making army and if you can do that if you deny his harassment and now that creates a window for you to finish off your economy and then now you're like cool now I can just go into my Lingbane Muta Lingbane Hydra whatever you want to go for you now have control of the map and now he's the one the game switches in reverse and now you're the one who controls him instead you're the one who like threatens like with Baneling counterattacks on his mineral lines or you don't let him take a third super easy you're always making him feel pressured because you're every time every second he sits there waiting in his base you're spreading creep further to his base so he's like fuck i gotta i gotta go i gotta i gotta do something i gotta, I, I i'm gonna just lose if i just sit here you just you, like you put the pressure on him really hard when you get out of this phase you're in right now and like I, like economically and you don't lose all your drones Yeah, yeah. And then the last thing I'll say, this is huge, okay? This is really important to know this. You'd want to scout him again at six minutes. And six minutes is going to, if you, if he hasn't really shown you what his follow up's going to be yet and you haven't really figured it out, six minutes, almost guaranteed every time you're going to know, is it mech or bio? And behind that as well, you're going to know how economical is it going to be for my opener of drones? So. By six minutes, you're usually going to see a lot of production or you're going to see a third command center. So it really, this is where it gets a little complicated. And I am going to try to make the most sense of this. And the easiest way to explain this is I can. But your economy, the Zerg's economy development is only able to be invested into based on how good you defend attacks. So for instance... If you smash this with queens only, which you could have if you had a lot, enough queens, and then you, let's say you scout it again right now and there was a third CC right there, you have every right to take your fourth base and fully saturate it and there's no problem there. Easy. Super easy to saturate that. But if this attack wiped out a full mineral line and then you defended it after that and then you went back and you looked at his base at six minutes and you saw a third command center... You cannot saturate a fourth base because that would mean you have to saturate a third and a fourth base. You could you could resaturate your third, but you could not resaturate a fourth, so you're going to be weaker going into that part of the game. Because if you saturate a fourth and he attacks you again, you're going to die. And then finally, the last part of this is... If you deal with this, and you defend this, or you take damage to this, either way, it does not matter. If you kill it or you before or after you lose drones, and you scout his base... And there is no third command center, but instead there's like two more factories or there's like three more racks or four more racks. And it's like seven production buildings. You cannot saturate a fourth and you need to start making fucking units like right now. Because if you don't make units right now, you're going to probably just die to a fucking like all in a two base all in. So there are three kinds of follow ups for Terran. And two of them, and the, 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 the one that's easy to understand is, oh, no third command center, instead lots of production. It means I need to make units, and I can only make drones when I kill armies. Like, drone windows are when armies die. 
And then you can make one round of drones and then go back to making your army again because he's super all in. That's easy. I feel like that's an easier one to understand. But the more, more difficult ones to understand are, you can if he has if he does have a third CC, you need to know your limitations on how many drones you can make based on how much drones he kills. And again, that comes down to, you can only make, realistically, drones for about thirty seconds. So whatever. 30 seconds of droning is going to get you is what it's going to get you. And ideally, that's going to be 4-base setup because you defended your 3-base setup really well with queens. But if it's not going to be 4-base setup because you've lost a lot of drones, you're just trying to recover for 30 seconds to as many drones as you can and then get ready to defend the next attack. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah it, it okay. definitely does. Because the, the biggest is the problem that a lot of Zergs have is they don't really respect aggression enough and they over-drone and they die. Yeah. So, you also want to understand that you can still squeeze drones out when armies die for like 30 seconds because the Zergs who don't squeeze those drones out and they go, okay, well, I have 41 drones and I defended your attack. And two minutes later, when you attack again, I've still been making units off of 41 drones. Like, that's. You're, you're, you're all in then as Zerg and you're going to fall behind because you're not really developing yourself at all. Meanwhile, Terran always develops himself with economy because he makes army at the same time because it's different buildings. So you have to squeeze those drones in when you can. Yeah. Yeah, that, that does make sense. That's also, well, the, I think, the hardest part of playing Zerg that when to make army, when to make economy. Yeah, no, for sure. And that's why scouting is so important. And, I, and it's, I'm super yeah. happy with your scouting. It's actually crazy good. Like, I did not expect your scouting to be as good as it is. Keep doing that. Your scouting is your best aspect of your gameplay right now. Like, you literally scouted. Other than right now, you don't have a... I, I don't know if this overlord uh, was going to go... It's actually going this way or it's just sitting there. Either way. But right now, if the game continued... Obviously, you're dead, too, so it's fine. But uh, <laughs> if the game did continue, you definitely want to scout right now again. This would be yeah, your yeah. your last real important early game Overlord scout because you, you wanted to find out uh, again what like mainly what comp he's going to go for and how uh, economically invested he's going to be or is he going to just straight up all in you? Uh, it's huge and it's the ways we talked about it just a second ago. And then after that, what you'd really want to scout is you'd want to have uh, like a zergling always kind of checking the third bases or like if, once he takes a third, check the fourth bases. Just just make sure he's like not getting away with more than he should. Because the worst thing you can do is Zerg yeah. is be like super defensive as well, and suddenly he took it three fucking command centers, and you're like, wait, what? How do you have so many bases? What the fuck? <laughs> so don't let that happen. That's really bad. Yeah, yeah, that is actually one thing I'm I I've been trying to focus that having the circling scouts. That's good. Scouts all over the map. Maybe even if I remember, have them patrolling between some choke points or so, so I know if they move out. Yeah, no, that's great. Faster. Your, I mean, your scouting is definitely a good part of your gameplay. So that's keep doing that. It's great. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, once you get here, once you, once you, if this game didn't go the way it did, and you got to the point to where uh, you had a good economy still, and you scouted, you went over his base again, and you were like, okay, this guy has nothing. This would tell me, once you killed this, you have enough time. So, like, in this, in this exact game you're playing right now, okay? If I was you, this is what I would say. Scout him again. See no third command center. See no extra buildings either, which is... It means this guy's broke as shit. But there's no SCVs either. So, I would say you have enough time, once you kill this, to finish off your three-base saturation. Because if we go back, right before you lost a bunch of drones, like, right about here, you literally need to make like one round of inject and you're good to go like you're going to be fully on three bases like so you're going to hit 66 really fast you're look we're looking for 13 drones here and that's you can make 13 drones faster than, thir than 30 seconds provides because in 30 seconds you're going to make 18 larva worth of larva so you were, we're going to have five to spare essentially because you get one every 10 and you get three every 30 for injects so you get six every 30 for essentially for each hatchery so uh yeah you have plenty of larva to use here. You could easily make your rest of your drones to throw down your... Uh, let's just say this was a hydrogen, okay, just for an example. And let's say you made two evos, and that's going to be now two more drones off of 18. You need 13, so this would now take you to 15 that you need. This would be 16 that you need. 
and 17 that you need right there. And you'd have one larva to spare, which could be like an overlord. You could easily get that done. With like the, like the drones that you need to build buildings and saturate these buildings and then have enough supply to do it. And then right after that, you could just make army. Once you saw that. And you would not... You could still start your fourth base as well. But don't saturate it until you kill his next army. Literally contain this fucking dude. And push your creep into his face. And that army allows you to push your creep as well. Because one of the big things you want too is... You want to make sure that when you have control of the game, you would already know after you scouted this, you're like, cool, I'm two bases saturated above him right now. Uh, this is great. And he'll eventually slowly saturate his natural. But I'm two bases. I'm, on, I'm already on three bases fully saturated, and he's on one. Soon to be two. So I'm definitely cranking out way more money than he is. And if he decides to push me again, which is his only real option to still have a chance in this game, I'll crush it if I'm just making army right now. And it means once I crush it, I saturate my fourth. And if he doesn't push, literally just like fucking max and just break him. You could literally do that as well. Because you'll be maxing yeah, way as faster. As efficiently as I can, almost. Yeah. As long as I have larva. Yeah, exactly. It's uh, it, like there's, it's like a win-win condition for you no matter what. Like you have so many options. Because even like, even if you took in a fight where like, let's say you crashed into his base and you killed his army, but your whole army died. You guys just reset. You could just be like, cool, well, I killed his army, so I just take another drone wave now, and then I'll go back to making army again, even faster. But because he has no army again, and even though he's not dead, my creep, instead of being here, on this side right here, it's spread all the way to, like, right there now. And, like, I'm actually covering his third base with creep, and your creep up here could be, like, maybe, like, right here. And you're just, like, pushing creep down past the gold, down to his other potential third. And suddenly this guy literally can't even leave his base without walking on creep every second. Because you're focusing on controlling the map with creep. And then every time you have a, a drone window, which is when armies die, you take drones. And then once you have 80 drones or so, you just don't even need to make drones ever again. Like, you're, you're good. You just transfer them around bases at that point. And that, this is against someone who's hyper-aggressive, right? Against someone... If you would have saw a third command center, that's a drone window too, right? Like we talked about earlier. So it doesn't always have to be aggressive. It's just this guy particularly, because this guy doesn't like economy. This guy is a fucking aggro machine. He's like an all-inner. Which means his economy sucks anyways. So even if you stop at three bases, you're still crushing him. So, uh... I'll, I'll say it again, because I know we just talked about more stuff, but how's everything we just talked about feel? Does it make sense, or how are you feeling? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely, definitely makes sense. Super helpful. Uh... And like th this is the thing I struggle, especially in <coughs> TVZ. Yeah. With these non-standard things, yeah. and then as you see, I'm floating crap tons of money when things happens. But yeah, there's like so so much information to process and <coughs> have the perfect defense, and so it's yeah, it's not easy. Mm -hmm. uh, so I would say. Don't be, like we talked about already, don't be afraid to make more queens. And you can literally make queens up until you have, like, 12 of them. I would say 12 is probably your max. Like, once you get to 12 queens, yeah. that you should probably stop. Uh, because by then, you'll, you should already be fully saturated. If that game got to that point, that's a lot of queens. But 12 queens would definitely help you so much at dealing with pressure. And people who play like this, where it's like, I play fucking weird. What are you going to do about it? I have 12 queens. And then this guy will be like, I hate queens. Like, every Terran, I can't even begin to tell you how much every Terran hates queens. If you do what I'm saying, which is you just drone up with queens. Because you can defend everything with queens. It's it's crazy. Uh, like, every 1-1-1 one, one, one form of defense with queens. Which you saw. Uh, yeah, the only, the only time queens... I'll say this, too, because this is something we haven't talked about yet. The only time a lot of queens isn't going to feel that threatening like it's going to be still be threatening but it's not going to be as scary for Terran is if they're doing like a 2-1-1 build and you already knew f like right off the bat this wasn't 2-1-1 by how early you saw that factory get made like that factory was fucking fast so that's not 2-1-1 okay if it is 2-1-1 uh, you could I would say against 2-1-1 anywhere between 7 queens you, you go back to your 7 standard that's fine or you could go up to like 9 again also, like, that's all... I, 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 let's say it like this, okay? This is actually a better way to say this. If this Terran player was going for a 2-1-1 where his build order was Rax, Command Center, 
Rax, Factory, Starport. Seven Queens. But if his build order was Rax, Rax, Factory, Command Center, Starport, nine Queens. Like, if he's going for production multiple times over the Command Center, and you're like, why is your CC so late? Like, my natural's done, and you haven't even started a CC yet. Nine Queens. More Queens. But if it's normal, and you're like, okay, yeah, normal. He built it early. Like, Rax Command. Okay, seven Queens. And then the, the, the other like answer would be, if it's two on one, just obviously make, like, Ling Bane or something like that, and you'd be fine. And the cool, yeah. the cool thing too about two and one, is you can still leave overlords scattered, like I talked about for uh, Hellions, and you you could just be like, using it as spotters to see where he comes from, and as soon as he comes from an angle, run away with your overlord, and then that hopefully it doesn't die. <coughs> but if he comes at an angle at a, to an overlord where he hasn't even unloaded yet, run your lings under it, and he can't even unload then. And you buy yourself more time to make more units and do whatever you want to do. And spread more creep and take more control of the game. Because 2 on one 2 on one needs to have Marines on the ground to be effective. And it needs to make you lose... Like, it wants you to lose things. Like, it wants you to trade, like, 18 lings into it and they all die. But you have, like, let's say you have 30. And he loads up his Marines as the Marines are getting, like, red. And then he lands somewhere else and, like, heals them again over, like, a cliff or something. Uh, that's what he wants to happen, which means that you're not stopping him from dropping. But he also doesn't want to walk across the map because it's way faster if you boost across the map. So he'll be in the medevac initially. So if you were to catch him before he unloaded, you could get underneath him and prevent the unload and then be super annoying and just waste time for him. And they would give you advantages there because, again, you're the one. Time is on your side early game because, again, creep is creep is the biggest thing of all that creates a, pr a problem for Terran that is... Time is on Zerg's side, not Terran's side, if you can control that properly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah. Uh, so, I mean, lot... The, lo, like lots of info there uh, back in like I threw yeah. I threw a ton of numbers at you and there's a good chance you're gonna forget like some of the shit I said you're gonna be like um yeah that's why we have to avoid exactly yeah so I just want to make sure that you know that and you do so that's yeah. good so I'll I'll be I'll I'll have the vod sent to you by like tomorrow I actually I'll ask you that's I don't right. I don't want to wrap it up just yet if you if you want to do one more thing if you have time if you'd like no I mean I'm I'm quite tired it's one sixteen a.m. so you're ready to go for another hour is what you're saying. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. Uh, maybe. No, maybe. I, I, I was going to say, if, like, you obviously, don't, you don't have to say yes to this, but if you'd like, I could do a really quick example opener for you. But, I mean, if you feel confident in your opener and you just want to know, like, how to react, then that's fine, too. Your opener was actually not bad, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, I I, I like this opener. Uh, I think the adjusting it is the main point for me. For example, okay. the queens or having <clears> the tech before. I think those are the... Uh, yeah, I have been trying to keep um, not not making too much different openers at this point. Sure. Since I'm okay. Just learning the game, or just yeah. maybe having va variations is. Well, I, I will I say this: your this your reactions could use some improvement, which we talked about a lot here. But your scout timers yeah. and your overall build, like the development of it, was great. Like your saturation early was great. Your stat, like your mural stacking, your droning was great. Uh, it's just not enough queens and not enough reaction to, to aggression. Otherwise, it was super good. And then the the a big part of this lesson, too, that's really important to remember is the timers of the four-minute scout and analysis we did about how to read what it is and how to react to what it is. Yeah. Those are huge, too. Uh, but, yeah, otherwise, you keep keep it up, dude. I feel like you're definitely going to – just making more queens is literally your answer. You're going to be like, wow, this fucking yeah. owns. Why didn't I do this <laughs> earlier? <laughs> All right. Well – Dude, have a good rest of your night, I guess, and get some sleep. Thanks for doing the lesson. And uh, Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I'll, I'll have it posted to you. I'll send it to you on Discord. I'll have it posted to you by, like, tomorrow, and then I'll, I'll send you the yeah, link to yeah. the video. Yeah, no, yeah, no hurries. No hurries on that. All right. Well, Yeah. thank you, dude. Yeah, thanks. I I hope you mentioned my thick Finnish accent. Did you? I, I love this. The what? Sorry? Uh, my thick Finnish accent. Uh-huh. Yeah.
I mean, people. I can understand everything you're saying perfectly. I, I thought you were yeah, going to yeah, say yeah. more there. I was like, wait, what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I yeah, uh, yeah, no. no I, 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 you have like perfect English, so it's totally fine. I, I, I didn't yeah. struggle to communicate with you at all, so it's totally good, dude. Yeah, but hey, thanks for you. I'm, I'm going to sleep now, satisfied by all the information you, you gave me. Nice man. And nothing else. Yeah, just lay, yeah, lay in bed, lay, lay in bed, <laughs> think about some strategies, and then you'll fall asleep super fast, and yeah, tomorrow, watch the VOD or something, and let it sink in, and crush some Terrans, man. Yeah, see ya. Alright, later, man. Alright, guys. That has been a lesson with Pokseli. Uh, thanks for doing it, dude. Uh, and anyone out there who watched this, I hope this helps you as well in your own games about how to deal with Terran as a Zerg player and how to, uh, you know, understand and react to things properly about what you're dealing with. So thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Like and subscribe. <laughs> I never say that, but everyone else always does for YouTube videos. Uh, but I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy. Much love. Thanks for watching. And good luck in your games, guys.